How do you remember learning when you were younger? What, what is, is the key thing you watched all those years ago? That's, That's right, TV. Do you remember imitating your favourite TV shows and characters as they appeared on the screen? Like fighting like a ninja turtle. Swinging your lightsaber. Or whistling like Spider-Man. We learn these traits very quickly because of the engagement videos provide. The sound, the flashing lights, the voice. With that in mind, we want to open you up to the idea of video modelling. So what is video modelling? How can we use it specific to a teaching environment? Well, video modelling, uh, as the name suggests, is modelling a particular skill to a student using ICT, video specifically. Uh, as stated by Bellini, we use video modelling to teach at a primary level, uh, to teach functional, social and behavioural skills, and at a preschool level we use it to teach play skills. However, it can be modified to almost any situation. Children respond really well to models and environments that are similar to themselves, which makes video modelling really good for them. Let's say you yourself was in the spotlight, you would feel good about yourself, and you would want to try and do that again. We are now going to turn you over to our special guest, the Professor, who will introduce you to the other advantages of video modelling. Thank you for having me, Alex and Raj. I have been invited to talk about the benefits of utilising video modelling in our classrooms for students with severe disabilities. The first key advantage is that it provides explicit instruction for the student. We can tailor a video with the magic of editing to remove all non-essential cues, so we can model each step with the suitable actions and responses required without any little extra bits that might distract them. They also... Hold your horses, Sonny. Did you say video modelling is good? I'll have you know back in my day we didn't have videos or technology. We didn't have to teach using technology, and now that you've embraced it, you'll become dependent on it. Not so fast. We have a range of technologies readily available at all times. We can use phones, tablet computers such as iPads, home computers and TVs. And the fact that it's so readily available means video modelling is a very flexible strategy. It can be used with different practitioners and even parents while at home. Even the type of video doesn't matter. You can use computer animations or even stock puppets. But it might not always be so available, especially if you come from a low socioeconomic background school, where technologies aren't accessible. Video modelling is, however, actually cost-effective compared to other types of intervention and teaching strategies. It provides high motivation, and most students improve after only a few trials of the process. But think about this. If we can teach them using videos, what is stopping them from learning bad behaviours from other videos? Or as I like to put it, do as the TV says. They can learn violence and implicating behaviours that are not socially acceptable. We do have to be careful of this, but again, we have to explicitly tell the students they are learning from these videos rather than normal videos, specifically modern videos. Modern videos use non-verbal prompts which can benefit students who learn more visual, from a more visual learning style, especially those who have trouble comprehending language cues. Thank you, Professor, and, um, old guy. Oh, we're outside now, because we got kicked out of the room. Video modelling has two particular derivatives. Those are self-video modelling and point-of-view modelling. The two differ from the regular video modelling, modelling structure in a few ways. Self-video modelling is where the subject of the video is the child themselves. They are recorded by their teacher and then shown a video of them doing a behaviour correctly. Point-of-view modelling is different because it focuses from the child's perspective, thus eliminating all irrelevant cues, leaving only the activity being conducted in the preschool and play activities. A study done by Avakoglu involved video modelling for students with intellectual disabilities. This study looked into modelling appropriate behaviours and social skills to meet and greet others. The modelling ran through several sessions. Students had a co correct response rate of 40%. And what, and what they found from participating students is that by their fourth, fifth and sixth sessions, they were able to reach 100% at modelling. These skills were transferable as they were noted by parents and teachers that students used it in daily life, at home and at school. The students had learned that video modelling strategy also increased motivation. Another study by Chiak based on transitions showed that without video modelling, their success percentages dropped from 77% to 36%. If you're still a little confused, we will now be showing you an example of video modelling. We're going to take a shopping trip and we will record ourselves explaining step by step how you would go through the process. 